Okay guys, well, I have been looking through my phone, looking at the photos as you do, and I noticed that this photo is a photo of the warp that I wound for making my first twill gown. This photo is from March 27th, 2021. It has been almost an entire year that I've been weaving twill gowns. So what have I learned in this entire time? So you guys, <laughs> as you can see, I have a couple of gamps here. So this one, maybe I'll show you this way. This one was gamp number six. And this one is gamp number seven. So what have I learned after weaving seven twill gamps in one year? So you guys know that I've started to work on this Guild of Canadian Weavers Master Weaver examination. It's a test. It's to prove that you know how to do all of these things. And so when I very first started with the uh, the assignments, I looked at the twill gamp and I was like, I can do that, you know, make something about 12 inches wide, make it, you know, four sections of different twill threadings. I can do that. Trump as writ, for sure. I can do all these things. But as I started to get into the actual weaving of it, there were so many nuances that I learned that um, th that are different from just knowing how to do something. Knowing how to do something and actually being able to do something are two completely different things. And so I feel like it's taken me these seven twill gamps in order to get to the place where I feel comfortable and I feel really good about weaving these twill gamps. So the first one that I wove, you know, was in the beam. It was just beam, so it was cotton yarn. I had to figure out what the set was going to be, all of that kind of stuff. And I found some fabric was too firm, some was too soft. And then I switched to a different kind of yarn. So then I decided to use some wool yarn and I made one out of this merino wool called Knoll merino lamb's wool and it was like a much finer yarn so I made that one on the Mira and then I decided to work with a smoother yarn so in this case I found some bamboo 7 which is a bamboo viscose yarn it's like a rayon it's a cellulose yarn very very smooth um, it has kind of like a feeling of seven strands of sewing thread that have been sort of gently gathered and gently twisted together they don't even feel like they're plied together you can just you can see them untwisting right before your eyes. <laughs> um, and that's kind of what the bamboo seven is like. So these last two twill gamps were all woven in the bamboo. Now, why did I weave six and then another one to make seven? Well, six, I was weaving really, really well. I was doing a great job. And then for some reason, I sort of lost concentration. And instead of making four DIY twill sections, I decided to make five by accident. I think I just lost count of how many I was making. So I ended up making nine sections instead of the eight that you're required for the exam. And so then I had to weave the gamp again to make another one. But I feel really, really good about this last one. So with all of these twill gamps that I wove this past year, I feel like I learned six main things. The first thing is learning about set, learning about how to figure out what the right set is for a new to you yarn. Like not all of these yarns you will have worked with and not all of these yarns will have sort of set recommendations from the manufacturer. And so you kind of have to figure it out because the set is going to vary. It's going to be different depending on what kind of interlacements you're doing. And so, you know, a set that might work for this kind of twill might be too firm for a different kind of twill, might be too soft for another kind of weave structure. And so you can feel all of that stuff in these, uh, in these different twill sections. So like when I look at this first one, this is the 2-2 two -two twill. This on one hand feels buttery soft, but then when you go to some of these other sections, like, I don't know what this is. I think this is like broken twill and something or other, it just feels more crisp, more firm, more bunched up and solid. So the different interlacements will affect how your fabric feels and that can also be altered by slightly changing the set if that's what you wanted to do. So I learned a lot about set. The second thing that I learned that I think is so important is about threading and threading accuracy. So over this past year, you guys know that we filmed a class with Laura Fry, the intentional weaver. So we learned how to thread heddles in her way. And I found that that was 
it's something that you can read about and you're like, oh yeah, of course that makes sense. But then actually getting into the habit of doing it makes a huge difference. So the idea that when you're going to thread a unit, you pull out all the heddles that you need for that unit, and then you align them in the way that they appear on the draft so that you have a visual idea of what you're going to thread. And then you thread everything and then you double check your work, <laughs> double check your work as you're threading, um, as opposed to what I have had happened, which was with my first twill gap, I was just threading, 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 and then Rose Path got confusing for me for some reason. And then when I went to go actually start to weave my header, I realized I had like three threading errors and then to have to go back and make repair heddles for those and then weave another header, like all of that could have been completely avoided if I had just double checked my work as I was threading the heddles. So that's something that after seven gams, I feel like is really ingrained in me, just like double checking your work and threading more accurately. The third thing that I learned is that I really want to have a read that is appropriate for what I'm working with. So in the first couple of twill gamps that I wove using the gist beam, I was weaving at sometimes 15 ends per inch, sometimes 14 ends per inch, and I was using a I can't even remember if I was using a 10 dent reed or a 12 dent reed or whatever it was, I had to do a little bit of irregular slaying. So and that means that like I was pulling one thread through each dent and then maybe two in another one and then maybe one, 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 two, one, 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 something like that. So it was irregular. It wasn't one thread per dent um, because it's not entirely convenient to have all reads for all different sets. So I was working with some sort of irregular slaying, but when I was weaving the gamp, it was confusing to my eye what was happening in the cloth. And I was very frequently stopping and wondering, is that a threading error? Did I make a mistake there? Does, is something going on in this area? Because uh, I can't tell because some of the threads were just too close together. So some of the warp threads that had been slayed together in one dent, they looked too close together than the other ones. And so after moving away from the gist beam and then working in the wool, I was working at, I believe it was 20 ends per inch. And so at 20 ends per inch, I could slay two per dent in a 10 dent reed. That was a little bit easier to read. And then I started making the bamboo one here. And uh, I have a 12 dent reed at home. I decided to use 18 ends per inch. I thought I can slay it one, two, one, two, one, two. And then in talking to Vicky at the school of Sweet Georgia, we were talking about getting the right read. And so I think she had ordered a new read and I thought maybe I'll order a new read too. <laughs> and so I did. I ordered an 18 dent read so that I could slay each end one per slot. And I gotta say it's pretty it's pretty convenient. It's pretty luxurious. It feels really luxurious to have a reed just for 18 ends per inch. But um, I used it for this bamboo uh, twill gamp and it worked beautifully. It just feels really clear, feels really readable, just doesn't feel messy. And so I quite like that. And now after using that 18 dent reed for the twill gamp, I'm going to take it off and I'm going to use it for uh, the color gamp that I'm going to weave next as well. So the color gamp has to be woven plain weave, A2 cotton. Um, you could weave it at 20 ends per inch, but it would be on the, a little bit on the firm side. And I believe I want to try weaving it at 18 ends per inch. And so I'm going to use that same reed for that purpose. So I know it feels a little bit like overkill to have all these different reed sizes, but it is awfully nice. <laughs> the fourth thing I learned was about changing weft bobbins. So in this case, because we're weaving all of these different sections and there's a contrast color for your weft, and then you insert like four picks of another color, and then you have your main color and then four picks of another color, you get into a lot of practice of having to sort of cut and change bobbins. And so I learned for myself, you know, when I want to tuck the yarn into the same shed, when I want to tuck the yarn into the next shed, all of those kinds of things. I found for the most part, tucking it into the same shed is good in order to keep it with the same color, obviously. Um, but at the same time, that yarn can look a little bit doubled up. So it depends on what kind of yarn you're using. Um, sometimes tucking it into the next shed makes it look less uh, 
obvious. So learning to change all of those colors as they come is really, really handy. And having sort of a rules in your mind about when you choose to put into the same shed and when you choose to tuck into the next shed, all of those kinds of things are really, really helpful to learn as well. And the other thing that I learned is number five is about floating salvages. So when I did the OHS uh, basic weaves unit, unit one, one of the things that we had to do was to wind enough yarn for floating salvages, but decide when we were going to use them and when we weren't going to use them. And so I learned that floating salvages are not always your friend. You don't need to use them all the time. There are some weave structures that you absolutely do need to use floating salvages, things like basket weave. You can't really, um, you can't really go back into the same shed if you don't have something tacking that yarn down at the salvage edge. But in a lot of twills, you don't actually need a floating salvage. So I chose to weave these last few gamps with no floating salvages because eventually with the treadling progression, your yarn will come back around and it'll catch the uh, salvage threads and everything is fine. So maybe you can see I chose not to use any floating salvages in here. This is kind of what my salvages look like. I don't know. Are they good enough? <laughs> I think that is sort of the moral of the story. This is the crux of the matter. It's just, is it good enough? Is it good enough? <sighs> So in any case, if you were to use a floating salvage, then your weft will catch on every single pick. And so sometimes that doesn't make your salvages look the best. So what I found is that just uh, keeping a really even uh, rhythm to my weaving and to my feet, making sure that I advance the cloth so that the fell line is in sort of that sweet spot, so that way when the beater hits it, that it's perpendicular. It's not like the beater's not hitting this way and it's not hitting too much this way, but it's hitting just like perpendicular to the fell line. And so that's kind of what I was aiming for. And so keeping that uh, weaving in that sweet spot helps with your salvages as well. And then as well, I used to use an end feed shuttle for almost, uh, for actually a lot of my weaving. And so for twill gamp number six, I did weave this with an end feed shuttle. And then I found that the bamboo was kind of coming out of it in a really loose way. And I wasn't able to um, put the excess yarn back onto the pern in a really easy way. So I just decided to switch back to a regular boat shuttle. So you can see this is the end feed shuttle that I was using, but for some reason, this bamboo yarn is so slinky that it would just kind of come off on its own and then there would be these saggy bits hanging everywhere. So I didn't really want to keep weaving with this thing. So I put that away and I ended up just using a regular old Leclerc. This is like an old one. So this boat shuttle has um, the opening for the weft yarn is much smaller. The newer ones have like a longer area where the yarn can come out, but I like that coming out just this one spot. And it seems to make a really consistent, um, makes for really consistent weaving. And so that really helped with my salvages as well. So I feel like after seven gamps, I feel pretty good about those salvages and getting just that really nice and even consistent beat. Finally, the last thing that I learned this year is about wet finishing. So this is another class that's coming out with Laura Fry for the School of Sweet Georgia, and that is all about wet finishing hand-woven cloth. And so the way that I used to wash all of my wovens was just I would use like a little bit of soak, um, you know, the soak wash in hot water, warm water, and then just kind of wash the cloth after it's been woven and it would kind of do its thing. And then I would hang it up and let it dry, just like air dry. And then I would be, I'm done. <laughs> and I think that I discovered after working with Laura on this wet finishing class is that that's just washed. Um, it's not actually wet finished. And so there needs to be like a little bit of agitation in order to get all of those warp threads to like deflect and move around each other and all this kind of stuff, especially with wool. And that wool will full and it blooms and it blossoms and you need to agitate it in order for all that stuff to happen. And then once that's happened, then you actually do need to press it. So that's what I'm gonna do with all of these samples as well, is that they need to be washed properly, wet finished properly, and then given a good hard press. But you can see here, this is my sample, the first two sections, and I wove this as a sample, cut it off the loom, I just surged the two edges so that way they wouldn't sort of fall apart. But I did wash this, I agitated this in the bathtub, and then let it dry and pressed it. And look at the drape on this fabric, like, it's just like, 
it's like silk. It's like silky. Wool doesn't do this. <laughs> it's just so nice and drapey and slinky. Yeah, definitely. This is a lovely yarn to work with. This is the Bamboo 7. So honestly, weaving seven gamps, it was a lot. It was a lot. It feels like a lot. But at the same time, I'm really happy that I did it. I'm really happy that I spent an entire year, basically, working on this twill structure, really getting to know it, really understanding how it works, how to, how to do it. <laughs> but now I feel like I'm done. And I don't know if you can tell, but I, there's still warp on this loom for the twill gamp. There's still enough to weave one more. And I started weaving the 2212 section and I was like, do I really want to make one more twill gamp? Should I just weave the whole thing off and make it into a scarf? Probably that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to weave it off in just one twill pattern and cut it off and then take the reed out and then use that for the color gamp and then put something else on this loom. I think what's going to go on this loom next is I'm going to start doing some double weave uh, for the school. I have to make the samplers for the double weave class. And so that is going to happen next on this loom. I'm going to weave this and get, get this off the loom. I think a year has been long enough. So that is basically it for today. I am curious what you think. Would you spend one whole year working on just one weave structure or one technique or one whatever? Like maybe you spend an entire year just using supported spindles or you spend an entire year only doing tapestry weaving. Like how would how good would you be at all those things if you spent a whole year just focused on that one thing? I feel like when we are interested in so many different kinds of crafts, it becomes very difficult to just focus on one thing at a time. But, you know, taking the time, spending that focus on one thing will actually be super helpful. So thank you guys so much for watching this. If you like this video, please do hit the like button. It really helps people find out about what we're doing here. <laughs> and if you want to see more weaving content like this, please do hit the subscribe button. We come here almost most Wednesdays. We put weaving videos on this channel on Wednesdays. And we also have our Taking Back Friday videos on Friday, where we talk about everything to do with the fiber arts. So I hope you will join us back here on the channel and we'll talk about something to do with craft and color. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.